are we here? Because to answer why the social media thing, I have to take you guys back to why I became a special ed teacher, which was a question that was asked in this conference I was in. The past two days I've been at a conference uh, for professional development. Um, we're at a break right now, so I stepped out just to see. I haven't been to this part of the, I don't know what it is. I guess the Tower of America, as you can see it, uh, right there. That's pretty. But I haven't been to this part. I wanted to check it out. Pretty neat. I guess they just renovated it. So we're here at my old high school. Well, it's technically not my old high school anymore because when I was here, it was split into two, it was two buildings split into two sides of the city, but it was one high school. Now it's two different high schools and this is the new high school. That's weird. It was at this high school where I made the decision to become a special education teacher. This happened after a situation that took place in this library. I worked here with two other students for a class period we had free. We'd help out with finding books, putting books away, and other library things. Every now and then, students with special needs would come in like any other student would. Quickly, statements were made such as, oh, I don't like when they come in because they never know what they want. Or, I can't stand them, so I don't want to help. I was so angry about it, I remember just yelling out, don't worry about it, I'll do it. And then I said some other not so nice things. So I remember after that, Every time they came in, I was always the go-to person. They felt comfortable with me, and I, I realized I had patience to sit there and talk them through whatever they may need or want to find. And that made me realize I could do more. I can do more than just help them find a book. So I wanted to do more, and I became a special ed teacher. All right, so at this conference, somebody went even deeper into the question of why do I do what I do? And that brings us here, here to my old elementary, uh, San Luis Elementary. It's renovated now. <laughs> Everything's gotten renovated after I left. Um, well, yeah, used to be... the 80s were hard. I wasn't here in the 80s, it was like 90s, Oh, the 90s were hard. But yeah, it was an outside school, but it was here when I made the realization I never want another kid with special needs to ever feel excluded. They should always feel like they can be included to the best way possible. Let me tell you why. It was at this conference where the lady that I was talking to went maybe a little deeper into why as a teenager I reacted in such a way with, with anger towards um, the people that were saying such things and <laughs> my baby's waking up. Why I was reacting with such anger towards the people that, that were acting and saying this way in, in this fashion and why I reacted in a positive way. And so I told her a story, which I'm gonna tell you guys now, that I've never told anyone before. A story that I've never told anyone before because it's not very positive. And, and I've always held it as, it's not very positive until that day, until the day of this conference, when somebody told me, it's more positive than you think. Because if it wasn't for you being negative in this fashion, which I'm going to tell you, then you would, you would never have made the decision to become a special ed teacher and tried and keep trying um, 
to keep helping others with special needs. So here's a, here's a story. In third grade, um, I I wasn't. I mean, it wasn't that I wasn't very nice to the person. I there was a student in my class where I purposely would not include in anything my friends did. Um, playing at recess, anything, we would pretty much exclude him. And it's not because he looked, he looked different than us. It was just, he acted different. And at the time as a third grader, I didn't know better. I, my parents did raise me better in, in accepting everybody and treating everybody the way you want to be treated. But as a kid, yes, you accept a lot more people, but I don't know. I don't know what what it was. It was at that moment. Now I know it was a lack of experience. It was a lack of experience with a person that wasn't acting in the way a normal kid would act. Now, through my experience, I have learned the importance of inclusion. And 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 the consequences of my actions. Later on down the road, still in elementary, maybe in fifth or sixth grade, I had that kid back in my class. I came to find out how much he resented me and how much me being in his class was... <laughs> and as even though I apologized and, and I tried to include him, it was just, it was not the same. And from that point on, that's when I said I was never going to exclude anyone ever again. As much as I could help it, I would not do that. And helping those students in the library, it, it's not that it made me feel better. It made me want to do more. One, it, 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 I just felt like I needed to do more. Um, not just for them, but for everybody. For people to learn not to be afraid, not to get frustrated, not to to say, "Oh, I can't do this," and I don't understand them. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna help. I'm not gonna talk. To them. I'm not gonna befriend them. Because we're all human. We all need a friend. We all want to be accepted. We all want to be included. And from that moment on, later on in college, learning the different disabilities, learning how to teach. I said, I want, I want to take this of not wanting to exclude and wanting to include and apply it to something I can give back. And what I want to give back, I want to have an organization. That's my main goal is to have an organization that would help me teach through experiences and avoid the exclusion and promote the inclusion. That's what I'm working on, and that's what I hope the YouTube videos help me with, as well as the social media. Now, yes, it's fun, entertain. I didn't realize how much fun it would be to record videos, to edit videos. I love editing. I didn't know that. But yes, the reason I joined social media is to make a following, build a following, create a community that would help me support my goal. I also eventually want to turn the YouTube into a platform for people with special needs to give them a voice. I'm not sure yet. I have an idea, but I kind of just want to hold on to that for now before I share it out. The vlogs are fun. They're entertaining. Jen and I show our experiences to teach others, whether it be... You know, the home birth, the midwife, just being broke parents trying to raise a baby the best the way they can. But also to document this journey that I and Jen, because Jen helped me a lot, um, that we're taking to be able to make this organization happen. But to end with, I truly believe that experiences of the way we learn. 
So we're going to keep sharing our experiences with you. And I'll leave you with this quote. Right now your support is key. By liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing, you can help us build our community, which will help us get closer into creating this organization. And to help Jen and I continue sharing our experiences through video for others to learn from them or simply be entertained. Thank you. <laughs>